Next is I8, and this is a block that I'm going to assemble from the inside out. I've numbered my triangles so that they don't get mixed up because there's very similar sizes. So I've got my block laid out, and I'm going to baste the middle, and then I'm going to do these four and assemble them, and then I'm going to work my way out. Now, as I assemble these, the trick to make it look like it's not spinning is you got to find the middle. Once you put this with these on it, you have to find the direct middle of this and, and make it line up so that you don't have any offsets because each, each level that's off to the level before it is going to look like it's rotating. And so I still have yet to get this right. So we'll try it again on I-8. So let's see how this goes. I have the middle of my I-8 block done. So I've basted my triangles and stitched them to my middle. I did opposite sides and then opposite sides. So that's my middle. Now it gets a little tricky. So <clears throat> I'm going to baste my triangle here. And then I'm going to find the absolute middle of my triangle and mark it with a pin or a mark itself or however you want to indicate the exact middle. But I'm going to put a ruler on it and I'm going to find the exact middle of this triangle. Then I'm going to take that mark and I'm going to line it up with this point. Not necessarily this space. So you want to make sure that that mark here matches up with this white point. Because it, that's your visual point that will tell you whether or not it's straight. So if this becomes off here and there, that's when you get your optical illusion effect starting to happen. So I'm going to base these number two triangles and work on this next level. All right, so I've basted opposing sides here. And I have taken a ruler and found the absolute middle of my triangle and I put a pin in it so I can visually line it up. And I've stuck it in there quite a bit to um, have, you can kind of see the pin sticking up in the fabric. All right, so I have my center and then I have to put my triangle in. It's gonna be this triangle. So this side, leave my finger there, flip it over. And then this is the correct side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this pin right on top of my white point. I'm not going to worry about my red my my red triangle. I'm just going to put my pin right directly on top of my white point. And this is a really thick pin. It probably should be thinner so I can get it more accurate. But anyway, okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it for my flat back stitch method. But I need to use two pieces of tape. So I'm going to, first of all, put a piece of tape on my pin and make sure that my piece doesn't shift. Okay, so my pin, and this is a temporary, well, the tape is always a temporary measure. But, okay, so I've taped my pin down. And I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to match up without shifting. If I need to shift this, this alignment, I'm going to bend this point and make it fit to where this is. I'm not going to move this triangle. So this is lined up pretty well. So I'm going to tape this, not on top of my other tape, because I'm going to take it off in just a second. Actually, I might have to move this a minute. Let's try this. Let's try that. Okay. So let's take this, line up my point, and... Whoops. There. Okay, so I'm going to tape that there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and this one's not quite lined up. You've got, you've got multiple pieces on this side lining up to a single piece. And whenever you do that, you want to use a tape piece on each end. That, that allows you to line up each end properly. All right, so I'm going to line that up, not on top of the other tape. Okay. And then I take the 
non-opened part of my stiletto and I push my tape down because it gives you the maximum and tape scotch tape doesn't stick very well to fabric but it sticks long enough for you to do with all this stuff all right so I've got these two pieces down and I'm going to take come back here and I'm going to pick up my other tape and take out my pin and that's why you want to make sure that it's not on top of this tape because you're about to you just take it out all right so then you've got a pinhole here for a visual reference to make sure if for some reason it comes on tape or it shifts you know how this is going to work so let me put my pin away and I'm going to stitch this seam I'm going to stitch in the middle first I don't ever do this but in this situation and if and if I would have figured this technique out in the B row I would have been or actually on a9 would have been the best way to time to figure that out but anyway I'm gonna stitch here in the middle I'm gonna stitch probably from about this far to this far because this is a small triangle but I'm just gonna basically tack this point down then I'm gonna start on one side and work my way into that point and then start on this then tie it off right here wherever I ended my stitch I'm gonna meet those two and then I'm gonna start here and work my way in and the reasoning behind this this is your most important point because the idea is that you want this point to line up at a 180 degrees and this point and this point you know is so on and so forth so this becomes a straight line and that this to this to this to this to you know all these become a straight line that's what makes it look not like it's like it's not rotating now when you do stitch this here you're going to stitch from the red to the background across not from here to here but this of course is on the back I'm gonna be working from the back but I'm gonna stitch from this point to this point a couple of stitches to lock this in and then from this point to this point and I usually end up having the end of this stitch be here and the end of this stitch be here and that way it will close this gap as much as possible because if there is any growth in your block it's going to be right here so that's the other reason you want to start at this point because you want to minimize the growth potential and then it will minimize how much you have to ease in on these triangles and this is not that big of a deal usually on a something of this size but as they grow and as they get bigger because you know they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger you're gonna have to know you're gonna have you're gonna notice some growth and you're gonna notice some easing in more so than not so I've got my first two number two triangles on and I lined them up and found the middles and so I just like to check myself and I'll take and I'll put whoops sorry I will find this point on my ruler and line it up with this point just to see where these line up right whether they line up or not and if they're off is when you'll get some visual effects this one is on the edge of the tip and if I can keep this lined up it would be great so this one goes through the tip this one's on the edge of the tip that's close enough I'm gonna leave it alone there might be a little bit of an effect but not terrible so I'll be able to put on the other other two to make to finish off this level all right so now I have all four of my number two triangles assembled to my middle and so far so good the next level will start to see if we're getting them centered correctly because it does take a few layers to see if this effect is doing okay so now I'm going to go to my number three triangles and I'm going to base them again with this being last and then I will do the same thing I will find the middle and center it and put the corners on the tips of my basting and I will do opposite sides and then opposite sides so now I'm ready to put on my third level of triangles and I've gotten my triangle here I got it basted and I found my middle and I stuck a pin in it I had to use a needle because it's the only straight pin I had all my other pins were bent and it was causing issues so, so I'm going to place this 
Again, my pin is going to be lined up with the tip of this triangle, not the space created here. And in this case, it's a little bit of a gap, and that little bit of a gap adds up over time. So you want to line it up with the tip of the point of the triangle that it's echoing. Okay, so it's going to be on there, and then I'm going to match this and tape it, and then I'm going to match this on this side and tape it, and then stitch it. I'm going to stitch right here to tack it down, and then I'm going to start at this point, sew into where I, where I stitched it in here, tie it off, start at this point, and sew into this point so that I assure that all three of my points are exactly where they need to be. So now I've got my number three triangles opposing sides attached. Um, I will say that one of these, I think it was this one, yeah, one of these is off very, very small and it's over the edge here by about the thickness of the tip of my stiletto. And this one is in, you can, I mean, just this little tiny bit. And the reason I even point that out is because it's in the middle of the block. And as you get to the outside of the block, that 32nd of an inch or a 64th of an inch or whatever that is, grows into a 16th or an 8th. And that's where you end up getting off. So I'm going to baste and attach my other number three triangles onto here and then make sure that I center this like I've done with these. All right, so I was working on my fourth number three triangle and I was having a little bit of an issue. I've been, I've been tacking down the middle of these and then going to the end and working my way in from each side. What I wanted to do this time is tack down the ends like I normally would and then see what that does for my middle. Now this middle needs to be shifted off a little tiny bit to the left. The shadow's throwing it off, so it needs to be moved over a little tiny bit to the left. So I'm going to do that by pulling this that way and I'm going to leave my needle in here so I can make sure that my tip is in the right place and then I'm going to be able to complete my seam. So right now I could take my tape off, which I'm going to, um, because I have this stitched here and this stitched here and I'll see if this works a little better. Alright, so I've got four of my number three triangles done and it did work out a lot better to do the edges first and then so I pinned down the edges and then I did the middle and then I worked my way out from there so that seemed to work a lot better okay so we're gonna move on now that we've got this whole section in the middle made I'm gonna make the corner units so I'm gonna take my number four triangle and baste it and then I'm going to add the short angled piece. And I baste my pieces like this. I baste the short sides first and then I do the long sides just because that's what I do. So I'm going to attach this to this. And then once this unit's made, I'm going to attach this to those. And then I'll have a corner unit that I can attach to this entire side. And I'm still going to center it on this triangle. So we'll go through that. All right, so I've got my corner basted here, and I just wanted to point out that I have all of these pieces. This whole time, I'm only basting the pieces I'm using as I'm using them because this fabric is so intensely directional that I want to make sure that I get the right piece in the right location, and that's why I also have arrows and writing on it so I know which way it goes up. So um, I'm going to assemble my corner unit for this corner down here. And so I've only basted those three pieces, so then I'm going to attach that before I move on to my other corner. And again, I'm working opposing sides at a time. All right, so I've attached my two smaller pieces. And then I'm going to take this and connect it here. I'm going to make sure that I've got two pieces of tape because it's a multiple piece connecting to a single piece. And then I can put this unit onto there. All right, so now I'm going to find the middle. I'm going to find the middle between the red triangle, not from the whole triangle. So I'm only going to find the middle of the red triangle because this is the one that matters. So I've done that. 
and I'm going to then line that up with this white point here. So these are going to get lined up with the white points with that needle and then I'll stitch it from one end to the other and into the middle. All right, so I've got my first corner unit attached to my block. <clears throat> and now I just got to go around and do the other three. All right, so I finished putting my block together. And the last thing I'm going to check if I really wanted to see how this lined up right is I'm going to take and I'm going to see how this line lines up. So if there was an alignment question, so I lined up the ruler with this point and this point, and you see that this is a little off. This is looks like it's just about right where it needs to be. And then we'll check this way. I'll turn it so it's easier to see. I got this point and that point. And that lines up. That one's a little off. And you could also do it by checking lines. Like if you line up with a line here, this, this line should line up with that. So this is a little off, but it really looks a lot better than the ones I've made in the past. So I'm actually quite happy with this technique and I will end up using it again when I work on my second colorway, <clears throat> especially when it comes to A9. So I'm gonna call this good and I'm gonna move on.